YouTube Red Viking Trucker. Best Christmas present ever for my daughter. That's my beagle, by the way. A, a pillow of my beagle. I got to keep showing things. That's just so. That's just so cute. That I couldn't believe she got me this. Looks just like him too. So I got. I got. Even though we have no pet policy, ha! I got to buy it. He's in the truck with me all the time. I just had to show it to you. You want to see it again? Listen, this video is about one subject. This video is about pay plans out here when you're a new driver and you jumping from being a company driver to a lease operator or owner operator side. First and foremost, of all the math that's out there, all the computations you can do, all the stuff I did when I came into business, understand when you want to come and get your CDL license, to become an 18-wheel driver, a big rig driver, an over-the-road driver. When you do that, you're going to probably be averaging, if you paid your own way, this is the most concise way I can put it, probably averaging 800 a week in that ballpark, 100 on either, either side of that. Maybe more if you drive more, but you gotta be getting close to 3,000 miles and all the other stuff comes into play, cents per mile, whether they pay you to drop and hook, whether they pay you detention, all the other stuff that comes into play whether you're tarping loads, but $800 a week for a new driver. That's probably a good ballpark. When I say new, zero to six months. And then from six months to a year, probably $1,000. And again, $100 on either side of that is a swing, but if you drive enough miles, you can probably make more than that. Here's where a lot of folks that I'm speaking to were messing up and they're calling me and running, you know, running their, their tragedy by me. Because one of the reasons I held off on the lease option side, because I could have already moved into that six months after I got into my current company. I held off because the math didn't make sense. Um, to be a lease operator, I need to be a buck fifty or higher per mile, period. I've done all the math, I've done the computations a thousand ways from Sunday, I'm making good money as a company driver, but I also drive. I also drive, I, I run my face off. So. I make good money. Matter of fact, I'm making better money at six months and at a year than anybody told me I would make in this business. But I run my face off. And I take every additional load, except for one, that I can take. And I stay off my clock. I don't ride my clock. And, and I run. But for me to jump on the owner-operator, lease-operator side, it's got to make sense. I see so many people, and I guess it's because some of these companies... When you jumped into them, you didn't understand the math and what you were getting into, I guess. And then you're making six, six fifty, seven hundred a week as a company driver, and they offer you a lease, and now you're making twelve hundred a week. You know, but see, then twelve hundred a week is before you have to set aside anything for you as far as taxes, any other issues that pop up. That's where it confuses me why somebody want to take all that responsibility. You lose workers' comp. You're gonna lose unemployment if you get fired. All of that by being a, being a lease operator driver. And I know going from maybe 700 to 1200 a week sounds like a good jump, but when you take taxes out and you start setting money aside for yourself for any kind of emergencies, because at least as a company driver, you're responsible for nothing except your food that you eat. The company covers everything else. When it's your own truck, you're responsible for everything. I just see so many people get hooked into that because they think, well, like, now I'm an owner operator, but then all the risk is on you. The company has shifted every penny of that risk onto you. And yeah, you it might be three, four, 500 bucks more a week, but if you don't run one week, now you've made the same as you would have made that whole month as a company driver, you know, because you have to average everything out. So my point being just when you get out here and you start talking to these companies, if you, if you have to go to a company paid, company sponsor training I understand having to do that there's no shame in that but there's only a, a, a select number six seven eight of them that even pay for training call them all make sure you're getting the right math there's one that I would highly recommend if you want to become an owner operator lease operator and I'm using those terms interchangeably but there's one company I would recommend two hands down above all of them of all the ones I've talked to and you can normally transition pretty quickly, and one of them you can transition very quickly, and the second one, it takes about four to five months, you can transition. Those are the only two that I've, I've 
done research on that I would consider even jumping to if I was having the company pay my way and I was going into a company because I wanted to become an owner operator lease operator by this point but I held off because the math didn't make sense and for me I want to get the mileage and the experience and get one full year under my belt while I'm assessing and computating and collecting all this data I want to make sure I make the best possible decision because again, I learned this the hard way in real estate. I had a ton of leverage, and I realized at the end of my real estate investing, I should have been doing mobile homes all along because I had so little invested, and it was such a great upside. And uh, I'm trying to make sure that I leverage my next step because I don't need the company to give me a truck. I don't need credit. I can, I've got great credit. I, I've got a great line of credit to go buy my own truck. But I don't want to go be, jump on that side of the fence if I'm not getting a substantial difference in income. So the folks out there that are considering this business, it is, if you can live out of your truck, you can stack cash. You figure, let's just say for me, it's about 120 bucks a week for food. That's on the high end. So if I, if I spent 500 bucks a month on food and I was able to bank everything else, you could really start stacking some cash if you're coming out here to live out of your truck. You can live out of your truck. If you're planning on being home every weekend, you're gonna be more of a regional driver. It's gonna be a little bit tougher. The reason I say 800 to 1,000 because our company is, very, every company out here has the metrics. They have the metrics on what they need to be paying their drivers. They have a percent they need to be paying their drivers. They all do. And they all use best practices. My company has, for the first six months, you guaranteed an income of $800 for the zero months to six months. You're guaranteed that income. You can make more if you drive more. There are some things you got to do as far as how you handle your clock, how you handle your paperwork. And then from six months to 12 months, there's a thousand dollar a week guarantee. So that's why I'm saying 800 to a thousand. If you did, if you didn't have company sponsored training, that's probably a great average, not great income, but a great average to consider out here because my company, they've been in, around, you know, including the, the parent company for a good long 60 65 years you know they know their math they know their percentages they know their metrics so before you come out here and land with the company I'm, I'm about to do an interview with the girl another uh, female interview she went with the company who is known as one of the big company sponsored training payer companies but she paid her own way and she still went with them and she's having a horrible time getting miles she's having a horrible time making money so, and it breaks my heart when I hear those stories because it's bad enough if you're not used to working these hours and working this pace and working this amount of focus because you're in this truck, you're moving, you know, you have a 70 hour clock, you have a 14 hour day clock, 11 hour driving clock. If you're not used to being busy that amount of time, it's already gonna be a shock to your system. But if you're out here doing it for that amount of time and you're making five, 600 bucks a week, that's gonna, that's gonna blow your head apart. And I caution all of you that are thinking about this business, first and foremost, find a way, find a way, find a way to pay your own way if you can. If you can't, I understand company-sponsored training. Call me. I'm going to tell you the two companies that I would recommend you to go to if you have to take company-sponsored training. I'm going to tell you the top two I would consider. Pass that. Come out here to hustle. Come out here to hustle. 800 to to 1000 a week is good money for a lot of people. That's phenomenal money for a lot of people, but you're going to earn it. This isn't a this isn't a sliding down a hill on a, on a board in the snow. This is this is work. Um, it's a different kind of work. A lot of sitting, a lot of waiting, a lot of downtime between loads sometimes. But if you manage your clock properly and manage yourself properly, you can come out here and make a thousand dollars a week average for the first six months. You can't come out here and make twelve to fourteen hundred a week for the second six months, which your averages I'm on pace for. For the last six months when we get into a year it can it can happen but i run my face off and i've stayed a company driver because i've spoken to owner operators and making less or the same as i'm making they're responsible for everything in their truck and i'm not why would i want to jump right now until i have that last i'm getting the last piece of the puzzle figured out is what i'm getting and i'm going to make a good strong solid move but it's got to be a move that makes financial sense. Because if I'm going to take all that risk on, it needs to be a great reward. So, still a great business. I tell everybody I speak to that's not in this business, that's miserable, you need to look at it.
because my my office I have a windshield I have a, a window view of the world all day long driving over to El Paso mountain ranges plain states gorgeous amazing I'm I think about that a lot while I'm driving this is my office this is my window view to the world you might be sitting in a cubicle all day and all you have the best thing on your desk is pictures of your family and everything else is work related and trying to keep you upbeat and but you're sitting at this little cubicle or you're in this this warehouse you're in this big box store you're in an office building and all you have is four walls around you with no real view of the world this business is cool that way if you enjoy traveling if you enjoy being out and about if you enjoy hustling if you enjoy more of a nomadic lifestyle it's a good business and my window of the world is an amazing view most days even on the worst day it's a better view of the world than the best view I ever had in the military and the best view I ever had as a professional because I, we used to call it the fishbowl being in dealerships you're in a fishbowl all day long and it's a 12 14 16 hour day job there a lot better pay for me when I was in that but I'm in this for a very specific reason this has been a good business if you do your homework $800 a week should be your average expectation if you paid your own way through school and you're out here company driving if you find the right company find the right type of driving figure 800 a week should be average you can get more if you drive more a thousand a week for a new CDL 18 wheel big rig driver from six months to 12 months that should be your average you can make more if you drive more if you drive your face off you can make what I'm making but there are some sacrifices that come with that it's still a cool business so if you're thinking about getting your CDL first and foremost check the community colleges in your area Google CDL schools near me you're gonna have community colleges pull up you're gonna have regular schools pull up call them all you can do some of you folks can stay employed where you are and you can go to a community college on nights and weekends it might take you two or three months but you normally get better driving time more one-on-one -on -one with the instructor than you get at a big school and it's normally less expensive sometimes by only 15 1600 bucks make sure the school gets you 160 hours of driving and it has to have manual transmission training once you get out here you might get assigned to a truck that's automatic you very well may but if you're not in an automatic truck they want you to be able to drive at least the manual transmission trucks it's not a big deal you learn how to float gears very quickly I only use a clutch in my in my 10-speed truck that I'm picking back up this week on the way back through I only use the clutch about 5% of the time because I'm able to float the gears the rest of the time so I don't walk around with clutch leg all day long so try to find a way to pay your own way if you can and I tell some of you if you were my brothers and sisters I would tell you you're better off working a part-time job and banking the cash for two or three months and then getting CDL school paid for than to come out here and land with the wrong company in a rush getting company sponsored training where you're tied in for a year and then you're stuck you're better off over hustling early to get that school paid for somehow some way some shape getting with a company that's not a company sponsored training company unless you use one of the two that I would recommend if that's the way you got to go regardless there's no shame in that do what you got to do to get in the seat but get to your one year but know you're gonna be probably making a little bit less money than the other people that didn't have the company pay their way I've heard so many stories this week it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking to think I think about the number of hours I work and if I saw my paycheck and my paycheck was five hundred or six hundred dollars I would probably have a cow I, I would lose my mind because I know how hard I work I know how hard I drive my face off so just try to slow everything down when you're doing your research and, and figure a way find a way to get that other money you need to get school paid for and then find the right company this is still one of the best kept secrets and I say that from all my heart one of the best kept secrets that's my video I've got to do my uh, 10 hour DOT now and uh, appreciate you guys watching appreciate the comments the likes the subscriptions and also the sharing of the videos you can reach me at the email address above or the phone number below always text me first there please 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 if you reach out for help always have downloaded our car buying and car leasing app cars are pro it's right above me and then here's the website you can also download straight from the website that smartphone buying car buying calculator and car leasing calculator is on iTunes and Google Play 
please download it, rate it, and share it, and then reach out for help. Be glad to help you. Be glad to give you as much help as you need. And I've got some good interviews coming at you this week. Again, I, I learned so much by talking to other drivers that are out here that have experienced things that I've not experienced. You can save yourself a lot of headaches, a lot of heartaches, and a lot of mistakes by having the humility to listen to people that have been out here doing it. So thanks for watching. None of us are getting out of here alive. Man, Debbie Reynolds, uh, Carrie Fisher, mother, daughter, two days apart, died. None of us get out of here alive. What are you waiting on? And who are you waiting on? It's your decision. You're responsible for you. It's your decision. Make a move. Red Viking Trucker is out.